cupping is a safe and very practical therapy that you can use very easily in the clinic to achieve better outcomes. In this video, we will present cupping therapy and also show you how to use cupping therapy appropriately in the clinic. Cupping involves placing cups on the skin to create suction. This is an ancient therapy that has been traditionally practiced in different continents around the globe. Nowadays, cups are generally made from glass or plastic, and fire sources or pumps are used to create a depression in the cup. The functions of cupping are to move chin and blood in the channels, to relax and readjust soft tissues, and to expel pathogens. Cupping can be used to treat many conditions, including musculoskeletal pain, respiratory conditions, common cold, digestive conditions, gynecological conditions, and acute sprains and injuries. We will now see how to conduct cupping, including fire cupping, palm cupping, and various cupping techniques. There is also blood cupping or wet cupping, which is using the suction properties of the cups to remove blood from a site that cannot be done by the body's natural circulation or our practitioners squeezing alone. For more information, please see our bloodletting video. As for all the other techniques related to acupuncture, we want to make sure before we start that the patient is in a comfortable position and will be able to stay like this for 15-20 minutes. We take our equipment, so we have our cups ready, we have a lighter, alcohol, cotton balls, everything is ready. Uh, then we want to uncover the area we are going to do the cupping on. So make sure it's fully uncovered, so this is um, better to have more range of action. And uh, we'll of course need to wash our hands before, before we start. Okay? We are going to do the cupping on the back, on the first line of the bladder channel. So when we're doing the first line of the bladder channel, it is a good practice to start with the opposite side and then come back to the, the side closer to you. And just going on the same level and doing equidistant cupping on the same level of, um, the, of the back. So now we are ready. Um, I'm going to use the cotton ball. So I, t I grab the cotton ball with my clamps and then I'm going to soak it in the alcohol. I have to press a bit on the side of the cup here because I, I want to make sure there will be no drop of alcohol dropping, falling down. Now I'm ready. Um, it's always good to have, so here we have the, the clamps in my dominant hand on the right hand and I will take the cups on the left hand. So it's, you see here I'm, I'm ready with the cups on my left side. Uh, otherwise, if it wasn't on my right side, I would have to cross. So this is really bad. I always have the cups on the side you are going to grab them. And try to get them as close as possible to the, the, the place where you are going to do the cupping. In this example on the back. So now we are ready. Um, we are going to light the, the alcohol. And it's very important to try to be quick. Otherwise, if you're too slow, the, the cupping will not be strong enough. Try also not to have the fire directly on top above the patient. Uh, again, there might be a risk of drop of alcohol falling down, so you want to avoid that at all times. But try to have the source of fire not far away from the place where you're going to, to, to do the cupping. All right, so we'll start now. Oops, I'm sorry. Alright, so start with opposite side and try to get them at exactly the same level if possible. Quick movement, otherwise the, the cups will not be strong enough. There is absolutely no reason to, to press when you are putting the cups, it won't do anything. But you have to make sure that when you, you arrive to the skin, the cup should be flat. So like this, not like this, okay? So here it is. Um, now, Linda, is everything okay? Do you um, feel some tightness? Is it too tight or is it a bit uncomfortable? Mm, there's one to the left that feels a little bit tight. Okay, I see. So, is it this one? Yeah, yeah that's the one. That's the one. Okay. This happens a lot. This is normal. If it's a bit too tight, what you can do is just put your thumb um, below the cup and 
and you will be able to release a bit of, of pressure. So you see? Is it better now? Yeah, that feels much better. All right, perfect. So you want to make sure that you take the time before you started to do all this. Don't take the time after you've put the cups. We leave the cups for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, this is, uh, if, you, if you leave it for too long, there is a risk of blistering. So you want to avoid that um, in general. And uh, if you're not sure about your cupping techniques for beginners, it's always good to check from time to time to make sure there is no blister or nothing um, happening on the skin. OK, so I'm going to wrap this towel around to make sure the patient is comfortable. So after, let's say, it's been um, 10 minutes already, now I'm ready to remove the cups. So we have two different ways of doing that. Um, the first, we can just press on the side of the cup to remove it, like this. Or if it's very tight, you can use the sum technique we just mentioned. So you have this term, you, you put it under the cup, and then you release the pressure. This is also a very gentle way of removing the cups. We are now going to do the flash cupping technique. The flash cupping technique is about uh, not retaining the cups on the skin. So we'll um, place the cups and then remove it directly. You place the cup again in another location, remove it directly back and forth for, for some time. Um, so I will show you how you do it. So we have our, our color socks coat on ready, the um, source of fire. So I'm just using one cup, this will be enough. So again, I want to make sure the fire is not above the patient and that the cup is on my, in my hand and it's not too far away from the, the skin. All right, so we'll do it this way. Once it's in place, I'll remove it directly and I'll do it in another location. And I continue to do this back and forth. So I can do it just along the channel all the way. And I can change also the channel. So you'll have to make the, the cups, especially if it's a glass cup, it will start to be burning. So you want to check from time to time. You can also ask your patient, is it, is it starting to be hot? And if it's starting to be too hot, you change the glass. So you don't want to, to use the same cup. And you can continue to do it with another cup. Also with the cotton, it's good. If you don't want to, the cotton to burn, the thing you can do is extinguish it. And then soak it again in the alcohol, so only the alcohol is consumed, but the cotton can actually be reused. So we can do it again, and then we continue with the other cup. So we can use these techniques for 5-10 minutes, and once we are done, we can also retain the, need, the, the cups for, for 10 minutes after we finish the flash cupping technique. Is it starting to be hot or the uh, cup? A little bit. A little bit, but it's bearable. Yeah, definitely bearable. If it's too hot, just let me know at any time. Okay. We are now going to do the slide cupping techniques. So slide cupping techniques is basically moving the cup on the skin as it is placed directly on the skin. And uh, for that, we'll need to use massage oil to reduce the friction on the skin, otherwise it may damage it a bit. And you can buy um, some massage oil, or you can do it yourself. Actually, it's very easy to use essential oil to do your own blend, and you can even use different blends for different conditions. But otherwise, you can just buy it from, um, from acupuncture shops. So I'm not going to, to put the, the oil on the skin, in the area I'm going to to do the cupping. Yep, I want to make to use a bit more, I want to make sure there is enough oil so it will slide very smoothly. So you can see this this can start to be more, more oily. 
when you want. Okay, when I'm ready, um, I'm going to use my alcohol soaked cotton again. Again, you press because you don't want to be completely soaked. And then light on. So we put the cup on. You have to be careful that the cup is not too tight, otherwise it will be very painful as you slide. So I will now start to move. Uh, Linda, if it's too painful or too tight, just let me know and I can adjust it. Oh, it's a little bit painful. This is a little bit painful. Is it unbearable or is it still bearable? Oh no, it's, it's bearable. It's bearable. So if it's bearable, we just continue. If it's unbearable, you can use your thumb and put a little bit of uh, to under above under the cup to release a bit of pressure. So we're just going to do some stroke like this. Um, so we do 10 to 20 strokes to really release the tension and move the chain blood in this area. Oh, okay, that's all right, it happens. So when this happens, you just can use your cotton again and light it on again. So this happens a lot in this area because the shoulder is a very bony area and there is not too much flesh. So is the pressure okay? Yep, that's fine. If it's too much, just let me know. You don't want to be too quick again, otherwise it might be a bit painful. Okay, I'm going to move now to the next um, shoulder. I want to put a bit more oil to make sure there is some protection. So let's let it. Okay, I'm down there. Oops. I want to make sure the hair are all away and that the area is uncovered. That's fine. I'm just going to light it on again. So again, Linda, just let me know if it's too strong. Okay. Well, that's a bit strong. That's a bit too strong. Okay, so I'm going to put my thumb. Really, is a little bit of pressure. Is it? Is it better now? Yeah, that's much yes. better. Okay, excellent. And I can use both hands to move the cup if I want. An alternative to fire cupping is to use palm cupping. So in palm cupping, instead of using fire to create a depression within the cup, we are going to use a pump like this one. So the cups we are going to use are a bit special. It's usually plastic cups and you see that there is a valve here which will be able to connect it with the pump. Today we're going to do this on the legs, on the bladder channel. So we'll start with the bladder 40 and um, we place the cup on the skin. We make sure there is uh, no hole in the cups. Then we put the gun here and we pump a few times until the pressure is created. So is it too tight or is it bearable? No, that's bearable. Bearable. I think that's, that's fine. We'll leave it this way. Uh, we're going to do another one here. So again, make it flat so a few times. What about this one? No, that feels good. That feels good. Awesome. We'll continue with the left side now. What about this one? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. If it's too tight, just let me know and I can adjust it. Okay. Is 
Is it okay? That one feels a bit tight. That's why I feel a bit tight. So in this case, I can use the valve to remove a bit of pressure. Oh, this is too much, so I'll just do it again. Okay, what about now? Yeah, that, that feels much better. That feels much better. All right, so this was um, palm cupping. Palm cupping is excellent when you want to do wet cupping, which is bloodletting plus cupping. And we're going to talk about this in another video, so check our video on bloodletting. You probably noticed that some dark marks appear on the skin after a session of cupping. This is completely normal. We call them cupping marks. There is even a character in Chinese to call these marks, Sha. Traditionally, cupping marks are associated with toxins being dragged out of the body. Although there is no evidence cupping marks are of toxins, we know they are different from hematoma or bruising. The marks are not painful and generally disappear within 10 days. Cupping marks can actually be used for diagnosis as darker marks are signs of stagnation, including coldness and blood stasis, and an absence of mark is generally a sign of tea and blood deficiency. Make sure your patient understands the marks and agrees about cupping marks before starting the treatment. There are a few mistakes you should absolutely avoid when you're doing cupping therapies. So, first one, you have to make sure your source of fire is away from any inflammable objects, including clothes, hair or curtains. Second, you need to keep control of the source of fire at all time. So, don't get distracted and keep always your hand in your sight, in your line of sight. Third, check the time before you place the first cup and not after you place the last cup. Finally, Make sure you press the cotton before you light it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Johan Berling, clinician, lecturer and researcher. This video was produced by Sydney Institute of Traditional Chinese Medicine. Please check our tutorials and more information on the school in the description below. You can join our community and also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Good practice and take care.